Hi everyone, this is Jordan at Pure Elliott Wave here with your April 14th Euro dollar analysis update. So this week has been pretty interesting. We broke above resistance at 1.10 and then on the daily chart we have a dark cloud cover. So an interesting reversal pattern and the recent waves have been overlapping which either means we're about to have an explosive wave upward or a diagonal downward. I have two key levels for you to watch. Before we look at the weekly chart I like to mention that we will soon be going live with the euro dollar analysis and it will no longer be published on YouTube. I'll have five updates for you every week on the euro dollar in text charts and then every Friday you'll get a video just like this one giving you the key levels to watch and where I have my invalidations. I'll also be commenting below where I'm taking my own trades. So you can sign up for that using the link below for a special introductory price. So with that said, let's move into the weekly analysis. Last week we were expecting a flat for intermediate 2 which would unfold as A, B, C, but now with wave B retracing at least 105% of A, which is required for an expanding flat, we reached 107%. Now we can label this structure as A, B, C expanding flat, and that means wave C would likely go deeper, potentially the 618 level, which we, last week we were saying it could be the 382 or the 618 depending on how high minor wave B goes. I also have two wave counts for you. One sees minor B ended and the next sees minor B with another explosive move to the upside. So those key levels I'll bring to your attention shortly. For this chart, I would keep an eye on this best fit channel, which holds all of the upward movement so far in this mode of structure. So if we do see a daily candle breaching below this channel and not touching, that could be a sign of this C wave starting. Let's move on to the daily chart. This is the primary daily chart at this time. We also have an alternate, which I'll show you with some clear levels for invalidation nearby and a confirmation above which would invalidate the diagonal alternate which I have as well. These waves just have a lot of overlap so I have an alternate where the diagonal may be unfolding for this price action for minute wave C of minor B. And the reason it's an alternate is because this wave here for minuet 1 in our opinion it's best counted as an impulse. It's a clear 13 wave structure to the upside and with a little bit of finagling you can make it a zigzag which would be what an ending diagonal would be made of but you can, you can even look at the waves right now and count 13 which is a motive number so you got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and thirteen so just with the naked up uh, you can count that this is a motive structure which would be a wave count of 5, 9, 13, or 17. For corrective structures we count them as 3, 7, 11, and 15. So you just keep adding 4 and then you get what your wave would most likely be if you have uh, counted these clear waves. On the last trading day here which is the 14th of April this low did intersect the top of microwave one right here. So because of the overlap, this could not be uh, wave four right here. So we had to label this as unfolding as another impulse within this giant extension. So this wave count is extremely, extremely bullish. A common range for expanded flat B waves is 105% to 138%, which we've calculated here, 1.10 to 1.1224. So look for it to end potentially in this area, but it could go as high as the top of this best fit channel. With B unfolding upwards, once that wave is labeled complete, we'll also be able to establish a ratio between A and C, which usually shows a 1.618 Fibonacci ratio. 
The invalidation for this wave count is not far off at 1.09296, which would be when any of these waves to the upside enter the price territory of Minuet 1. And the reason for that is if any of these waves enter the price territory of Minuet 1, that would mean we're still in the second wave. And this second wave here would just be ginormous compared to all the previous price action. So this wouldn't be a likely wave count. And if that level is hit, then we'll move to the alternate ending diagonal wave count, which shows downward movement likely unfolding. Let's zoom into this price action here on the hourly chart. On the hourly chart, we've drawn a best fit channel around the recent price action. So if we did see a break of this channel or the invalidation being hit, as previously mentioned at 109296, then this would invalidate this wave count and bearish price action would be likely. We're not far off of that now. You can see here where we got a tiny bit of intersection between one and four, which means we would still be compounding to the upside and we're still working on this micro wave, which would still require a fifth wave to the upside. You can see this wave count does expect seven more waves to the upside. We can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for minute wave C. Now I'll show you the alternate daily wave count for the ending diagonal. For the daily alternate, we thankfully have two levels very close, which are the invalidation and the confidence level below. So if I were to trade this, I would wait for either of those two levels and then put a stop below the recent pivot with my own money. So we are very close. We should see a breakout of this area in the next week, I would think. Minor B is labeled as complete as an expanding flat, A, B, and C. And within minute C, which must subdivide as a five wave motive structure, this is showing it as a ending contracting diagonal in which one must be longer than three and three must be longer than five. So five would be longer than three at the invalidation level of 1.10906. This wave count also has minor wave B complete. So we can measure a target with a ratio of A to C of a Fibonacci 1.618 which would give us a target zone of 0 0.99505. And we also had the previous target at 0 0.618 of intermediate 1 to 2. So the target zone is between those two numbers. Now let's zoom in to this area here and look at the hourly chart. This hourly chart has a lot going on on it right now because we have the trend lines from the diagonal, which are the green trend lines here. We have the best fit channel to the upside which are these blue lines right here. We also have the invalidation above, which would be when minuet five is longer than minuet three. And then the confidence level is actually not here. It's right about here. So you can see we're squished right between the confidence for the diagonal and the invalidation above for the bullish wave count with minor B still yet to unfold. So next week, if we do break below that confidence level, which is right about here, 1.09296 and the best fit channel, we'd likely see some sharp motive wave downwards for minor C of intermediate two. So I hope I was able to make that clear, our two views on the market based off the confidence level for the ending diagonal and minor B being complete or the invalidation for this, which would show more upward movement to come. With that being said, let's move on to the technicals. Weekly technicals show a bit of bearish low volume with long run volume declining and short run volume also declining. Money flow is currently neutral and on balance volume had a line that had about two to three tests and a weak 
bullish breakout would be classified as weak due to the slope of this line and it wasn't very long held. So could potentially see some more upward movement just based on on balance volume, but with the declining volume on increasing price, I would say this chart is neutral. Moving on to the other technical weekly chart, you can see resistance above at 1.117 and we have just broken that resistance level I had last week at 1.100 with a longer wick on the top side and the downside showing indecision at this level. ADX is showing that we're in the early stages of a bullish trend and we could have much more to go for ADX. RSI is neutral, showing we have a little bit more to go before we are overbought. Stochastics are neutral, and ATR is very slightly increasing as price rises, which is different than we, what we see on the daily chart. You can see the 200 moving average is rising with price. You'll see all the moving averages on the daily are bullish as well, and support below sits at 1.050 and 1.030. If price did reverse from this point, I'd expect support at that area. For the daily chart, this looks moderately bullish to me due to the on balance volume having a recent breakout on April 11th with a little bit of follow through. And then for the regular volume, we see a slight increase with upward momentum. Money flow is neutral. The daily surprisingly showed a dark cloud cover two weeks in a row. So we had a dark cloud cover to end last week and then another dark cloud cover to end this week where price opens above the previous green candlestick in an upward trend and closes at least 50% through. This candlestick is very close to a bearish engulfing if the close would have closed just a little bit lower. Again, we had broken that previous resistance at 1.10 and the next resistance overhead sits at 1.1170. All the moving averages are currently upward sloping and bullish with the short over the mid and the mid over the long, which is not pictured on this chart, but it is down here about upward sloping 200 day moving average. ADX shows we are in the early stage of a bullish trend with RSI saying we have more to go to the upside before we are overbought. Stochastics are saying overbought but with ADX increasing we are no longer in a consolidating market so we use money flow, RSI, and ADX to judge the reversal points for the trend. ATR actually decreased with upward momentum showing that more volatility is expected to the downside. With the conflicting signals on this chart between the dark cloud cover, ADX being bullish, RSI not overbought yet, and the moving averages all bullish, I would say we need to rely heavily on the Elliott wave count. Again, keep an eye on those two levels I mentioned previously. And that's all I have for you this week. Hope you guys have a good weekend. This has been Jordan Marshall with Pure Elliott Wave. Bye.